What's up everyone, Soldier First Class here and today's mission, we're going to look at the new Final Fantasy VII Remake trailer and do a deep dive combat analysis. There was surprisingly a lot to dissect from a 1 minute trailer, but my brain overanalyzes everything so I had to pause and rewind and catch every little detail that I could. After watching the trailer over 30 times, talking with my friend and fellow YouTuber the Night Sky Prince, and hearing feedback from the ranks of Soldier, I've noticed quite a few things I'd like to discuss when it comes to the combat. We still don't have a lot to go off of, and these are just my personal observations. To get started, each character had different combat styles in the original, and the remake will be no different. Cloud is the up-close and personal brawler, while Barrett would be the long-range attacker, preferring to stay at a distance. It's also possible that he'll have a distinct advantage against flying enemies, much like Waka from Final Fantasy X. Now let's get into the button mapping we saw. It would appear a special or heavy attack is mapped to the triangle button, and might be a chargeable attack. Much like most action titles, if this attack is chargeable, it probably means you'll be left open to enemy attacks while doing so. It would also appear that each character has their own special triangle attack, as Cloud has Punisher and Barrett has Backblast. Square is your basic attack button, and would appear to be the main option for attacking and starting combos. I'm hoping to add more depth, the combos will be changeable based on the movement of the left stick, or some other way to change your attack variety. While this design appears simple on the surface, I have a feeling it won't be that way in the end. It resembles Dissidia's Brave and HP attack systems to an extent, but with only HP attacks for the remake. This is actually no surprise, considering the lead battle planner for the remake also worked on Dissidia Duo Decim. I'll be interested to see if there will be a stagger mechanic, as the last few Final Fantasy games have featured it in some way. I'll talk about the command menu a little more in depth in a second, but basically hitting circle will open it and allow you to use the face buttons to select special abilities like materia, items, and limit breaks. You'll also gain access to shortcuts from this menu, much like the Kingdom Hearts system. It also shows here that you can switch characters from the command menu by hitting L2 or R2 for the character you want to switch to. While we do see here that Cloud is blocking the saw attacks, it never shows you how to block. I'm assuming it's not automatic, and that you'll have to time your blocks and even possibly take advantage of a parry system. Blocks don't completely negate damage, but reduce it, much like it did in Crisis Core. A few things I noticed were missing from the trailer were quick time events and a possible jump mechanic. Jumping could bring something extra into the combat, with air combos and juggling enemies being a possible feature. Quick time events are often a feature in action games, especially the God of War series, so it will be interesting to see if they'll make an appearance here as a finishing move, or if they'll be in the game but not used in combat. Let's take a look at the status bar, specifically the most exciting part I want to talk about, the ATB bar. It's represented by the blue bars you see here. This is where I'll discuss the command menu as well, because I believe they're related. If you look at the screenshot here, Cloud has two ATB TV bars filled. If you look closely at the command menu prompt, there are two bars there as well. When the menu is opened, you'll notice the bars move to the top of the menu. Here's another screenshot with only one filled, and the same is reflected on the command menu prompt. With this in mind, I believe ATB is used for abilities like limit breaks, items, and materia that are set in the command menu. In this way, the command menu is similar to Kingdom Hearts, except that you can equip as many of a certain item as you want, making it better than that system. In Final Fantasy XV, we saw the ability to spam potions and other healing items, but I don't think that will be the case in the remake. It seems like it will require the use of an ATB bar to do so. The same goes with materia and limit breaks. That means you will have to pick your spots and not be reckless with your ATB. It wasn't clear from the trailer if having no bars means the abilities will be grayed out or not, but from playing countless RPGs, I would assume that would be the case. I also believe that ATB usage will be directly linked to the power of certain abilities. What I mean is that the more powerful the attack, the more bars will be used. You could use it on lower power abilities so you can use more of them, or you could use it all on one major attack like Knights of the Round or Omni Slash. If this is true, it will add even more strategy to your combat decisions. I'm not sure how ATB is earned, because the trailer didn't make it quite clear, but I would assume that it's earned from landing successful attacks. Backing up to Limit Breaks for a second, I believe Limit Breaks are also tied to your ATB bar. Part of the command menu showed Braver being listed, which is Cloud's first Limit Break. With this in mind, I believe that you'll not only need a full Limit Bar, but at least one bar of ATB. The more powerful the Limit Break, the more bars you'll need to use it. It would appear that filling your limit bar will be based on damage taken, much like the original game. When Cloud takes damage in this clip, his limit meter goes up, so it will still retain some aspects of the original, at least as it pertains to limit breaks. So now let's talk about the command menu itself. Originally I thought that the shortcuts menu gave access to your equipped abilities, much like Kingdom Hearts. However, after further analyzing the trailer, I believe that's not entirely the case. It would appear that the abilities shown are part of the command menu. After hitting the circle button, your most important skills would be ready to go. Let's say you want to use a fire spell because the enemy you're currently fighting is weak to it. Instead of disrupting combat, if you have fire materia equipped, you could hit the shortcuts button and have access to it. This would let you equip skills that you feel are most important to your base command menu, and then add a whole new set to your shortcuts so you could be prepared for any situation. Speaking of materia, it's something in the remake that we know very little about. One thing that Square Enix did confirm with this trailer is that materia will appear on the weapon you have equipped. If you look at this screenshot here, you'll see a green glowing orb in one of the Buster Sword materia slots. I'm not sure how weapons with more slots will be designed, or if this was just an example because the materia slots are an important design feature of the Buster Sword. I have a feeling 
that materia will function similar to the original. Equip certain materia and you'll be able to fire off whatever ability it gives you. Spells and summons will probably function like normal, but certain materia like steel or enemy skill will be an interesting mechanic to see. Overall, we know too little information to really make a judgment on the materia system. Square Enix and Tetsuya Nomura will most likely show the materia system at E3, and I can't wait. Damage output and attributes have also changed it would appear. Barrett is seen in this screenshot doing only 1, 2, or 3 damage to the enemy. While action combat means you'll be striking more often, it also means that each hit will do less damage as a result. This comes along with the territory of having an action-based battle system. Attributes like strength and defense may be lower so that fights last longer than just a few seconds. You'll still have your weak wave enemies, but even those fights could last longer than the original game's enemies would have. As of this trailer, the previously seen health bar is no longer visible for enemies even when locking onto them. It also makes combat more fun and challenging, and requires strategy to take down tougher enemies instead of just button mashing your way to victory. It'll be hard to get bored with a system that makes you adapt to your enemy's strengths and weaknesses on the fly. Before critical mode, Kingdom Hearts 3 just didn't have the difficulty fans were looking for, even when playing on the hardest one available. It would appear that Nomura has learned a lesson with that concept, as strategy and decisions will play a key role in the remake's battle system. It's unclear how the AI party members will function during combat. I'm hoping a gambit style system like the one we saw in Final Fantasy XII will be in place. This will allow you to customize how your party reacts to certain combat scenarios and adds another strategic element to the combat. Overall, this deep dive is just speculation, but I have a feeling I'm right on a few of these points. E3 will hopefully clear up any questions we have after they show the remake at the Square Enix show. There's been rumors that the remake's combat will be the new standard for Final Fantasy games, and if this system is as great as it's shaping up to be, I actually wouldn't mind that. Imagine if the Final Fantasy VII remake is the test Square Enix needs to push the idea of a Final Fantasy VIII remake. Now that is a world I want to live in. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to omni slash that like button. Let me know in the comments section below if I missed anything that you may have noticed. Subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell to join the ranks of Soldier today. And for all the latest Final Fantasy VII Remake news, rumors, and trailers, I'm Soldier First Class, and I'm on to the next mission. Later, guys.